In this video, I'd like to talk about developing ideas or an argument through writing by applying some of the ideas I talked about in the last video. So if you haven't seen that one or you need a reminder, go back and watch that one and then come back. Now there's this common idea that if you just write, then the argument will somehow emerge. But there are actually specific techniques you can use to develop new or deeper insights or to build an argument. So as I mentioned last time, we can frame almost all the information you present in terms of responses to a problem, a question or a need, or as consequences of an idea, an action, an event, or discovery. So when I'm writing, one of the first things I'll try to do is to describe a problem. So this serves as a starting point and a focal point, and it gives the writing some purpose because everything else is then a response to that problem. Now, sometimes I can do this quickly if it's something I've spoken about or written about many times before, but if I'm developing something new, then what I'll do before I start to write is try to explore the problem in terms of its causes. For example, about eight or nine years ago, I was developing a webinar on working with academic literature. Now, at the most obvious level, the problem was that working with the literature is difficult and a lot of students find it stressful. And then there was the most obvious question, the one that a lot of students asked, which was how to read more papers. But instead of going straight to the response, what I did was I went deeper into the problem itself, looking at the reasons why literature is so difficult and stressful to work with, effectively breaking it down into a series of smaller problems. So there's the number of sources, there's the fact that they're not written to teach and they assume a lot of prior knowledge, there's the fact that they're often contradictory, there's the fact that some papers aren't very good. So all of these reasons, and I gave myself time to come up with as many as I could think of. Some of them are obvious, some a bit more subtle, some maybe not that relevant. But what this ultimately led to was a more interesting and nuanced problem that you need expertise to read the literature, but you also need to read the literature to develop expertise. And this led to the insights that you need different responses at different times, depending on what you're trying to achieve and on your level of expertise. So somebody just starting out in a new field and getting to know the literature should approach it in a different way to somebody who's already got 20 years of experience. And that became the foundation of the whole argument. I followed a similar process when I wrote about writer's block. So instead of treating it as a single issue, I thought about the numerous possible causes of writer's block, each of which requires a different response. And this led to the new insight that writer's block isn't a condition in itself, but a symptom, and that you need different responses depending on the underlying cause. So the secret here is to give yourself time to think beyond the obvious, to think beyond the first things that come to mind, to think from different angles and see what emerges. Now, you don't have to use all of the ideas, and you probably shouldn't, but having done this initial exploration, you can then select what you think works best. So we can start by describing a problem and thinking of multiple causes to understand better. And then, of course, we can think in terms of different possible responses. And then we can build on this by thinking about possible consequences of those responses or um, other ideas that come up. So thinking in this way generates a lot of ideas. So I think it's important to keep some of this thinking, some of this exploration separate from the writing process. So it's not just a matter of writing everything down in the documents and then sorting it out later. It's doing the exploration first, then selecting what you want to use. So I'll often do this by mind mapping using pen and paper, and then 
decide what I actually want to put in the document. And this is much faster than putting everything into a document and then trying to sort it out later. Again, coming back to that idea I mentioned a few videos ago that making initial decisions makes subsequent decisions easier. So if you'd like this video and you'd like to learn more about this way of thinking and writing, you might be interested in my upcoming 10 week online course on academic writing, where we'll be covering these principles in a lot more detail, including plenty of examples and exercises, as well as live Q and A sessions and a community forum too. So if you're interested, just click on the link in the description below for more details. So that's all from me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.